Hi, this is Jim. At the end of video three of the How Sales Really Work series, I posted seven tricky questions to challenge people as to they really understood the physics of sailing. And um, I didn't post the answers. So I've gotten several people's requests to um, go ahead and say at least what I think the answer is. And so I'm going to do that here. I'm going to go through each one of the questions in sequence. I'll, if you want to, you can pause when you look at the question, think about it, and then I'll give you my answer. Um, in all cases, I'm talking about a standard Bermuda rig just with a jib and a mainsail, no spinnaker, and we're always approaching it from the point of view of the, the sails themselves. Don't think about racing tactics or weather or anything like that. Just think about the answers from the point of view of how the sails work. Okay, let's start out with question number one. Close hauled, you put a telltale on the end of a boat hook and hold it just windward of the forestay. Which direction does it point as compared to the masthead fly? So to give you a little visual of this, let's say the boat's center line is right like this, and this is the jib. And if we look at the masthead fly, the apparent wind is coming in at a 30 degree angle pretty much right in line with the, the leading edge of the jib. And we take a, a boat hook with a little piece of string on it and we hold it right there. And the question is, what direction does the, the string fly? Uh, it sounds like a simple question, but it actually this is probably one of the most interesting things I found in the surprises about how sails work. You'd probably think that the right there that the air would be flowing directly parallel to the sail. You know, just comes in with the apparent wind and there it is. But when you actually do it, you find out that the wind is coming right there, is coming in from a very lifted angle. It's coming in essentially a beam of the boat. And, and that's pretty surprising. And if you don't believe me, just go out there with a boat hook and put a piece of string on it. Get close hauled. You want to a day without a lot of waves and just prove it to yourself. So so what's going on here is, is pretty interesting. So our sails are interacting with the atmosphere and they basically affect the atmosphere all the way around the boat including upwind. You can think of it as a big pressure field created by our sails and air is dumb, it just goes from high pressure to low pressure no matter what else. And so this pressure field has the effect of redirecting air which is ahead of the boat and bringing it around at an angle so that it can get next to the jib and go by and through the slot between the jib and the mainsail. So there's this big curvature of the air that starts well ahead of the boat and ends up giving us a very lifted condition right here at the, um, at the beginning of the jib. And that's great because that generates a big low pressure area here, a big high pressure area here, a lot of pressure differential to drive the boat forward. Um, and so that's really the secret behind how boats can go as close to weather as they can is that they create, in essence, a, a favorable wind for themselves and you take advantage of that to sail very close to weather. The flaw with this whole thing is that it's a very fragile situation. So if you go through a, a wake or something like that and your, your forestay basically moves, it disconnects itself from that nice lifted condition. And so all of a sudden, without doing anything yourself, you find yourself essentially in irons. And so you have to fall off, get the air flowing back over the jib and mainsail, create the situation again, and then gradually work back up into your normal upwind sailing angle until the next thing happens, which is maybe a boat going in front of you. Anything that disturbs that connection between the air ahead of you and your sails breaks the connection and you have to start over again. And so, you know, when you look at people who are really good at the helm, I'm not one of those people, but, you know, people that make the boat go fast, they are doing this you know, subconsciously and very, very rapidly. So they feel the sails losing their, their power, they fall off a little bit, they reconnect, they head back up, and they're just dancing along the edge of that curve 
all the time they're sailing. And um, it's a wonderful skill. It makes the boat go a lot faster. It's probably not something you can do in the open ocean. When, when you're in, or at least on a, on a rough day, uh, when you're in chop, your sails are constantly moving relative to the, the air, and so you just don't get that nice lifted condition, at least not for long periods of time. So generally we have to sail a closer to a close reach than close haul when it's rough, and you, know, you just sort of give up on this nice lifted condition. Um, now you can somewhat compensate since you're sailing on a reach rather than close hauled. You can put more curvature in your sails, generate more lift that way. That gives you more boat speed. You're not sailing at as good an angle, but you, maybe you're sailing just as fast. So you can make up some of it, but it's never good to have chop. Okay, let's move on to question number two. When close hauled, you hold up a small wind speed indicator on the high side of the cockpit. It shows two-thirds of the wind speed shown at the masthead. Why? And then what if you hold it on the low side of the boat? Okay, so we're imagining somebody with a little device like this one, and you know, normally we sit on the high side of the boat, and you hold it up, and maybe up at top it's showing 15 knots, down where we're sitting it's only showing 12. What's going on? And most people think, well, okay, that's the wind gradient. And, you know, that's not an incorrect answer. Um, there certainly can be quite a bit of gradient. But the big thing going on on a sailboat is you're sailing. You've got the sails up. The sails are interacting with the atmosphere. And the way they generate lift is that they have slow air, high pressure air on the windward side of the boat and fast air, low pressure air on the leeward side. And that's what generates the pressure differential and that's what makes the boat go. And so when you're on the high side of the boat, you're probably sitting in a low speed part of that contour. And if you were just to take this little wind indicator and say in the middle of the mainsail, just reach underneath the sail and look at it again, you see all of a sudden it's faster than what's showing up at the, um, the top of the masthead. And as you walk around the boat, these things are sort of you know, interesting to give you an idea of just how big these, these um, velocity changes are. Uh, certainly in the slot between the mainsail and the jib, you'll see a real high speed area. If the highest speed is probably going to be if, you, if you're able to reach around the jib and, and basically get the, windward, the leeward side of the jib, that will probably be the highest speed. So just be aware that you know, these are real fun toys, but there's really nowhere we can stand on a boat and our arms aren't anywhere near long enough to get away from the effect of the sails. And so that's of course why they put the wind speed indicator and the, the windex up on top of the mast is to get away from the sails to at least get a, a reasonably pure indication of the apparent wind. Okay, question number three. Two identical boats with identical trim in identical conditions, tack 30 seconds ago. They are both headed 30 degrees to the apparent wind. One is going five knots and the other is going six. Why? And you know, there could be all sorts of differences here, but again, we're getting at the effect of, of how the sails work. So on their original tack, we can presume both of these boats are being well sailed, so they have this nice lifted condition where they're affecting the air ahead of the boats, they've got this nice uh, lift helping their jib and mainsail be efficient through the air. Now when you tack, you're suddenly moving into different air, and that air doesn't know anything about your sailboat yet. And so, you know, what good helmsmen do, just naturally without thinking about it, is after they tack, they go through the wind angle they want, just a little bit, and they reestablish that nice lifted condition and then gradually work it up tight to that um, you know, apparent wind angle that they're going to sail at and from then on are just toying with that. The worst thing you can do is to basically go through a tack and slow down before you get to the, the close hauled wind angle that you want because it can take forever to establish that nice lifted condition. The air ahead of you is just banging into the sails 
And until you get some airflow going properly through the slot, you don't have that nice condition. You can't really sail close hauled. And so it'll cost you a lot of boat speed if you don't, you know, get through there, reestablish the wind condition, etc. Now, a practical application of this is when I'm sailing by myself, I have to use this uh, auto helm to do the steering, which I normally put on apparent wind angle, and it does a reasonable job of, of keeping apparent wind angle. Now, when I tack, you push two buttons and it, it starts swinging through 90 degrees. Unfortunately, the logic in these things uh, is based on corrected compass heading. What it does is it goes pretty close to your, your tack angle and it slows down. Instead of going past it, it just slows down and it's just awful. If the boat just stops, particularly in light conditions, it's, it's just a terrible tack. So what I've learned to do is when I start to tack, I push the two buttons and I let it get going and then I add an extra 10 degrees or in really light conditions, an extra 20 degrees so that the autopilot goes past my future tack angle. It gets over there, I tighten up my sheets, and then I take off those angles slowly to get back up to the wind angle I want to sail at. And again, this is all basically playing with this important phenomenon that our sails uh, interact with the air ahead of us and we have to take advantage of that to get maximum performance upwind. Okay, question number four. On a broad reach, you put a telltale on the end of a boat hook and hold it behind the center of the mainsail. Which direction does it point? Okay, I'll admit this is a really trick question because the answer is it points all over the place. It's, it'll look essentially random to you and um, we've you know, at Cammie Richards' suggestion, I put a bunch of telltales on a line and we videotaped it going up and down the, the mass. And it was just total chaos at every, every um, elevation. Um, so let me show you a little animation of approximately what's going on in slow motion, give you an idea of what happens behind the sail. So this slide gives us another view of, of how sails work, and I've showed four different points of sail, and you're looking at the streamlines from both a, a windward and leeward uh, point of view. And when you're sailing close hauled and on a close reach or even a beam reach, the airflow around your sails is pretty uniform. It, you know, there's some eddies generated by the gap between the boat and the sails and also up on the top. But in general, the air is going by the, the sails pretty smoothly. And that's where our telltales work. But when you get past the beam reach, the sails basically stall. And there's all sorts of eddies behind them, swirling air, and it's just a chaotic situation. Um, that's okay, though, because the air is behind us. Drag is now our friend. Drag pushes us forward, so it's not a disaster. We'd probably like to have a nice, smoother airfoil like you might generate with a spinnaker, but, you know, again, drag is helping us push along. So, yeah, just spend the time, put a piece of string on the end of a boat hook, and at various points of sail, um, check what the air is doing. I think you'll find it pretty interesting. Okay, the next question, it's a very similar subject matter. Close hauled at a race start with a boat close on either beam, how is your boat's passage through the air affecting the other two boats. Well, this is sort of thinking about that pressure and velocity contour around everybody's boat. And in essence, you can look at this uh, diagram looking down at the sails to get a pretty good idea where the high and low speed uh, portions of air are. Now, everybody's aware that there's a big wake behind the sailboat, pretty much straight downwind. And that's this big blue area off to the right. However, you know, there's a fairly large accelerated area which is to leeward of the jib, sort of from the beam forward of, of straight downwind. And there's a fairly large low velocity region to windward of you, basically straight a beam. So whether you like it or not, if a boat is ahead of beam to your windward, you're actually, in a small way, speeding that boat up. And if a boat is in the same position to leeward, 
they probably enjoy this part, you're slowing them down. So if you think about a whole line of boats, you know, maybe on a port tack at the start, it's like a giant mutual aid society. Nobody's really getting ahead, but it's sort of interesting that every boat is interacting one way or another with every other boat. Okay, question number six. In strong conditions, two identical boats are at hull speed. One boat has full sails and the second one is as in two reefs. Which boat goes to the windward mark first? Well, I, I'm cheating a little bit on this because it's you to really answer that question you have to know the entire performance spectrum of, of the boats and that's something beyond our scope here. But in general when you're at hull speed your boat is not going to go a lot faster. Um, it can go a little bit faster but basically all the incremental energy from your sails is generating more wake rather than making the boat go faster. That's why it's called hull speed. So if you look at the, the diagram of velocity made good you see that velocity made good is really driven by two things. One is how fast is the boat going, but the second one is how close to wind are we sailing. And it's the combination of those two factors which determines who gets to the windward mark first. So we've already said because of hull speed, we're not going to make the boat go much faster. So it really boils down to who is going to have the better windward angle. And so now it's interesting the boat which has the reefs in is going to be healed less, is going to have less force pushing it to windward, is therefore going to have a better angle towards the mark than the boat with all its sails up. So the boat with two reefs is going to get there first. And here in San Francisco we, we get to practice this all the time. Um, the slot is this area straight downwind of the Golden Gate. And particularly when there's a flood tide, it's really hard to get out. Um, so some of the tricks are to go by shore and get into back eddies and whatnot. But if you're in the middle of that um, wind stream, particularly in strong conditions, you get to really compare how boats perform. And a lot of times you'll see these guys looking just wonderful. They're heeled way over. They got all their sails up. People are sitting on the rail. And they basically go back and forth and back and forth, and they don't get anywhere. Uh, meanwhile, people that have their sail plan trimmed down, which are, are sailing close to weather, are just steadily moving along, maybe at a 20, 20 degree, 25 degree uh, heel angle, and they just gradually go out the gate. You can visualize the leeway angle your boat is making by standing in the cockpit and looking straight aft. Use the backstay as a reference, and then compare the line through your wake to the backstay, and that angle is your leeway angle. If you project the wake's path right through the center line of the boat and imagine it going out into the distance forward, that's your destination, that's where you're going to end up. And I always love looking at this picture of this classic boat. These guys, they're looking good, they're heeled way over, and they're all expectantly looking straight forward. Of course, where the boat's really going to end up is way off to the right somewhere because they're making a huge amount of leeway, but that's fine. They're having a good time. Well, the last question got cut off on my first take of this video, so I'll repeat it here. The question seven, why do your sails flog when you luff? What exactly is going on? And this is such a common thing. You see it all the time with flags and pieces of plastic and anything else that we all take it for granted, but it's sort of interesting to think about what's going on. So imagine this is the a bit of a flag right here, and the wind initially is going straight this way. And you'd think, you know, intuitively that nothing's going to happen, but inevitably the, the cloth ends up bent a little bit one way or the other. And the minute it has some curvature, you get the effect of a sail. You start generating high velocity on one side, low on the other, low pressure on one side, high pressure on the other. And since we're not pulling this flag taut, there's nothing to stop the fabric from bending. So it bends a little bit. The minute it does that, it generates a more curved surface, which generates more lift. And so keep, things keep building until the point where it bends too much and the airfoil stalls, you get a bunch of turbulence. And so now there's no lift anymore, it collapses, goes back the other way, 
but everything happens in reverse. Now we start generating with this way, and back and forth and back and forth. And so the flogging of your jib when it's straight into the wind and not taut is just another manifestation of these same forces that are always working on our boat, whether we want them to or not. Well, that's it for the tricky questions. I hope you've enjoyed them. If you haven't already done it or you want to review, this is the last of a series of uh, videos. Uh, the first video describes how the data was collected using a real sailboat and the mathematical models that generated the pretty pictures and, um, and basically the quantitative results. Video 2 discusses primarily the jib and mainsail in close hauled configuration, a little bit about downwind sailing. Video 3 uses the concept of velocity made good to explore the interaction between your boat sails and the forces under the waterline on the keel, rudder, and hull, which we often forget about. The fourth video discusses reefing and why sometimes it's faster to sail with reefs than not. And then the last video is about sail shape. Why do cruising boats tend to have these really curved sails and high-end race boats have these incredibly fat, flat sails? What's going on? I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.